Hey guys, uh, welcome to Wild Gone Apps and we're going to be doing a quick review of the Google Wi-Fi app. So you can see I've got my Google Wi-Fi point right there. Um, and we're going to fire up the app so you can get this off Google Play Store as I said before in my previous videos. So you saw, you may have seen an unboxing video of Google Wi-Fi and a setup video. So right now everything is running. 25 devices are connected to the online network. Um, I have two Wi-Fi points, I have the internet and I have the 25 devices. So let's first take a look at the internet. So we have our speed tests, recent speed tests as you can see. Uh, average download speed. So this is um, the speed that I'm actually getting from outside into the house. Uh, coming direct into this box uh, which is connected to the... Um, Virgin Media modem, so you can see I'm getting pretty good speeds, you know, 131 currently, 10 meg, 10 meg upload, and over the last couple of days, or I think it runs a test every day or every morning or every other day. You can see it skips a day, 21st of May, 23rd, 25th, 25th, and if I want, and we can see the live usage right now, it's pretty cool. Um, I wonder if I can run a a speed test. Let's have a look. Okay, maybe I can do it from somewhere else. Okay, so that's the main network history uh, for the hub direct. So then you also have the Wi-Fi points. So I have two. And you can see, yep, it says you've got a poor signal to your hallway one. Um, and it, when I initially set it up, it was um, halfway. And it was pretty fair. So I'm not sure why it's decreased, but I think that's just because of um, general... Um, degradation because of stuff that's being moved around near the hub downstairs so the signal's lost but even then even then downstairs if you bench it from the phone you get about um 20 25 meg 30 meg which is fine to be honest it, it's, it's a natural way of throttling it for everyone downstairs they're not really doing much with it i needed i need more bandwidth upstairs for my playstation and for work and all that kind of stuff so it's fine um uh, we also have um, settings. Let's see what's in settings. So here you can see, um, you know, you can see what the latest software update is. You can restart the complete network. You can factory reset, um, and you can configure each one specifically. So, for example, if I go to Attic, here you can see um, you can actually configure the light. So if I say put the light off, you'll see the light on the hub went off there. If I say put it back up, so you can control the brightness. There you go, it's back on again. You see that it flicks on and on. So you can control it, you can restart it, you can remove it, you can um, edit the name if you want, right? And same with number two, or if you've got a third one to add, you can add the third one, which is pretty cool. So let's go back, let's go back again. Okay, so here we that's that. Um, and if we have a look at devices, this is pretty cool. So you can see what 25 devices are linked. You can see what kind of uh, memo, what kind of memory or RAM, not memory, what kind of uh, data they're pulling in terms of download. You can see that my laptop is running. Let's skip that. Okay, you can see that my laptop is running. All these devices are running. You can have a look at each one. Uh, and if you want, you can enable MAC addresses, but I won't do that. Um, let's say I want to prioritize a device, so you can click here. And you can see all the devices that you can prioritize. They're all available. So you can say, oh yeah, for the Nexus 9, I would like what priority traffic for one hour up to four hours. What I would like is for this to also have a permanent setting. So one device is always permanent or at least longer than four hours. I like to have my PlayStation at priority. So I get m minimum lag uh, for Call of Duty and things like that. Right? So... Um, very handy to do. So what I do is before I fire up the PlayStation, I give myself uh, my PlayStation priority, uh, which is quite good. Um, and I, I can also, for example, um, on here, let's pick the device. I can see what the current usage on the device is, right? I can also go here and say, edit the device name, So which is locally for this. I can also say, uh, make this device... Um, Oh, you can reverse IPs, look, set up port forwarding. There was another thing that was where you can say, um, edit the name, or you can say, give this device a fixed IP. Okay, uh, I was trying to find that setting, but um, 
It's there somewhere. Let's see what's this. Show Mac address. I don't want that. Okay, um, I'll find it in a minute. You can go to the settings page and you can run your tests. So, for example, if we do network check, we can run a test on the internet. So, let's run the test. So, while it's running a download test, so this is like running, you know, doing a speed speed.net test against your hub directly out to the outside world so let's see what it says hopefully it should be 130 150 plus between that so officially i'm on 156 um with virgin media jamal let's see come on let's see let's look my phone don't die before that and it's quite handy because you can actually um here we go oh that's pretty slow Okay, that's actually a lot less than I thought. All my other tests have been running much higher than that. Uh, but anyway, that's fine. 11 mega blade. I mean, it will fluctuate depending on... I suppose it's a Sunday, everyone's at home. So some of your bandwidth... You know, there's normally a 50 to 1 contention ratio. So you're sharing it with the street or your locality. But that's cool. That's still not bad. Still getting 86 in the house. Redo the spe speed test. Check the history. Blah, blah, blah. And if we do a test between the mesh network... So this is testing between... Um, Google Wi-Fi point one, this one and the one downstairs to see what the, the transfer rate between the two is. So let's see what happens. So I'm expecting around, I mean, this is why, this is where it tells you, you know, you, they're too far apart. So your, you know, your, your signal strength between the two is quite low. Let's see what it does. It's quite handy. So it says fair, look, connection to Wi-Fi points is fair. Uh, moving to Moving them together. So it's actually quite interesting. It gives you suggestions and stuff. Any options here? Nothing there. Uh, which is quite cool. And then I can say, let's test this device. So I'm going to run a speed test between this device and the outside world. So that means that this device is connected to this hub uh, or to this Wi-Fi point. And then this Wi-Fi point is going to the outside world. So let's see what we kind of get. Remember, it was, it was 81 from the hub to the outside world. But what is it from the phone to the outside world? Let's have a look. Good. It doesn't actually give you a number. What's the number, please? This device has a strong location. Details. Your Wi-Fi speed is 124 megabits. I mean, that's faster than what it was saying a minute ago. So, like I said, it fluctuates up and down. Now, that's normal for net speeds. So, 128 from this phone to this Wi-Fi point to the outside world. So, that's pretty good, actually, considering, you know, it's, uh, let's say, finished. And in, I think it runs a test on, on a regular basis. Let's see what else we've got. Prioritized, prioritized device, you've seen that. A show password, you don't need to see that. Let's have a look at general network settings. So you can see um, the network name, Wi-Fi points, uh, advanced networking. So some advanced features such as DNS chip configurations, DC, DHC, uh, DHCP reservations and stuff. So I have one which right now, which is my PlayStation. It's fixed. There you go. And I did. I used to do that before on my uh, on my Asus router, so I could stick that PlayStation always in the DMZ to get minimum lag and stuff like that. Um, what else do we have? Port forwarding, plug and play stuff, universal plug and play, NAT mode. So NAT mode is open for Call of Duty, which is good. Uh, managers. How many people can manage the manage your Google Wi-Fi? So right now it's just me. App support details and diagnostics. So you go. What versions it are stuff like that privacy all that kind of stuff but in general what what do i think um i think it's great i can manage my network from my phone usually i would have to go in onto my browser and log in to the network while i'm on the network here i can manage it from anywhere i don't have to be in the house or connected to the wi-fi point to do this um, so it's really really cool i can see who's on it you know i can see you know who's on it what devices on it, anything suspicious you know Whose phone is that? What is this? I can always find that stuff out, um, which is quite good. I've got a lot of Nest stuff, as you know. So a lot of the devices are probably 11, probably half of those devices are Nest smoke alarms um, and um, the Nest thermostat. So it looks, everything looks good. And the, both the Wi-Fi, it gives you a little update summary on the main page. Your most recent download speed. The connection point is weak between the Wi-Fi points, blah, blah, blah. So it's actually quite good. Um, so far, I have to admit, I've been loving it. Minimum hassle, no messing about. Everything is running really well. The coverage between two, the two, the two Wi-Fi points and the general house is really, really good. No one complaining about I don't get Wi-Fi in my room anymore. FaceTime doesn't work, even though downstairs, 
the, you know, the signal between here and downstairs is weak between the points, they're still getting 20, 30 meg, which is more than enough for FaceTime and everything else that they need to do. There's no need for them to have any more than that. Um, and it means I get to keep the rest for myself. Yeah. So it's been great having it so far. I love it to bits. I think it's very handy, very easy to use, very... Uh, easy to manage if you want to make changes or you know like I said the one thing I'd like to have is a more longer time on prioritized device so either add the you know the either add it for a day a week a month so my PlayStation is always prioritized so I don't have to keep doing it uh, or keep enabling it every time I want to start playing but or make it permanent but I always prioritize this device all the time you know if I don't want that I can turn it off right but there you go there you go so slick wire is online I hope you enjoyed that video. Any questions or anything you'd like me to try or test out, give me a shout um, and I will do my best to try it and test it or answer your questions. Thanks for watching uh, Wagwan Apps. Please hit the subscribe and the like, like buttons for this video and we'll catch you in the next one. Thanks a lot.